it's raining here in the beautiful mountains of Western North Carolina. What a day to do a podcast. I mean, what the heck? It's a great day for knitting. I'll tell you that much. Is that right? <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Barry and Brandon. Um, if you don't know me, I used to do some periscopes. So there are people who asked, you know, when I was going to do video podcasts again. So here I am. Um, so I'm just trying. We'll see how this goes. And I think everybody says that on their first video. So here we go. Um, I live in the usually beautiful, and even when it rains, it's beautiful because it's foggy and mystical, um, western North Carolina mountains. Um, it is, in a, well, I live in a small little town that um, is really pretty cool. I've lived in big cities. I've lived in medium-sized cities, but this is kind of fun. My husband and I live on about five acres um, kind of outside of town. It's kind of special. There are a lot of retirees here from, not retirees, but people who uh, have retired from the city, not necessarily from jobs, um, writers and painters and, and musicians, and um, it's kind of neat. So, but what I do, uh, to say a little bit about myself, I am a stranded color work designer. Um, if you don't know what that is, uh, Fair Isle, it's, that's not exactly the right term for it, but if that'll get you through to what I do, that's what I do. Uh, stranded color work. I have uh, been knitting since I was eight. A wonderful woman when I was eight years old taught me to knit uh, a, a top-down red heart, royal blue color, but red heart yarn, um, cardigan, I'm uh, not cardigan, pullover, that I never finished because I lost, I was in Michigan, and I lost the last skein of yarn and had to go back to South Carolina where I'm from. That was probably the first and last top-down sweater I've ever done. I did it off and on until about the fourth grade when my teacher came in working on a knitting project and nobody else in the class knitted. I mean, nobody else did. Um, and because there really isn't too much of a knitting tradition in the South, or at least wasn't at that time. But this teacher comes in with this straight needles, weird thing that they called a smoke ring. and. You know, I felt like I, I, I can do that. I can do that. So she sent me to this place um, that to get, they had it just a written pattern that you just got a copy of. It wasn't even, it was a free thing. Um, wasn't a pamphlet. I think it was a handwritten thing called a smoke ring. And you had uh, a size 15 needle and a size 8 needle. And you used one of each. Um, so that you, and then there was a double wrap um, I guess that was on the, was either on the 8 or the 15. It had to have been the 8. It had to have been the 8. I don't remember it. But it, what it ended up making was these long open stitches like this and then a little narrow sort of garter stitch, little maybe one round of garter stitch because you knitted flat, it's about this wide, and you knitted back and forth and you double wrapped and when you came back around the next time you would drop the double wrap and it made this long open stitch and you were working in mohair. So what you ended up with with this was, I guess it was one skein. You ended up with this, too high for the cameras, but anyway, you end up with this wide thing and you'd sew the ends together to make what we know now is a cowl. At the time it was called a ring, a smoke ring, and it was called smoke ring because you, you worked out of either angora or mohair, I forget which. It was just fuzzy yarn. And, um, and then you, they'd wear it bunches around their neck and soft colors, these ladies did. Soft colors, and you, you could pull it up over your head, you know, so it was around like this. Um, and, and it was deep. I mean, it was probably 15 inches wide, maybe. But, I mean, it was all, it was very flexible. But all the ladies wanted them, and they were easy to make, and I thought, wow, I can do this. And then I quit for, I think my mother won, I made my grandmother won. It was, you know, it was kind of fun to do. Um, and then I quit until, um, when I, by the time I got into junior high school, I wasn't making smoke rings all that time, but you know, you get the point. In junior high school, it wasn't cool to knit because no, at that time, nobody was knitting, especially in the South, nobody was knitting. So it wasn't cool. And then I didn't pick it up again until, um, God, I was out of college. I think that's right. Yeah, I think I was out of college and my mom and my grandma took me to Great Britain and they went to bed early. I mean, early. So they said, would you like to have something to work on at night? Because um, we were um, sharing, they were sharing a room. that had a cot, you know, it was a cheaper way to travel. So I would sit up with a, one little light on and work on, they got me some yarn for a sweater. 
uh, because that's what I started with, you know, was a sweater when I was eight or nine. I figured, well, I could do a sweater, follow the instructions. So, um, and then at some point, it's a long drawn out story, but at some point ended up uh, on a tour that Rowan Yarn did that um, took me to Shetland and the Outer Hebrides where I met two designers, which I'll talk, it's a, that's a whole long story, I'll tell you about that later sometime. But I was introduced to Stranded Color Work at that time and couldn't stop, just couldn't stop. And so um, had a career in um, architect, degree in architecture, have a master's in mass communication, have worked with public television, have worked um, to doing a lot of things uh, like that, and finally um, got married. I mean, not fi well, yes, finally got married, sorry, but that's not the way that went anyway. Um, got married, and um, the my um, husband said that once he had two daughters, when my husband, when the two daughters went off to, to uh, school, he said, you can... Um, why don't you go do whatever you, you know, whatever you'd like? I mean, would you like to stay where you are? Would you like to try something else? And so I, I said, I'd like to try this design thing. So fortunately, you know, I, I had no idea what I was doing. If I knew what I was doing, I would have probably not done it. But um, I ended, entered a, um, a contest with Jameson and Smith. It was an international contest to make what they called a golf, sleeveless golf sweater. In other words, a vest of some sort uh, that even though vest in Great Britain is actually undergarment, I mean, it's undershirt kind of thing. So anyway, um, it came in third. I was so excited because um, there were people from all over the world that entered and the Shetlanders were the, um, were the judges and I was the first American. So that was pretty cool. I was really excited about that. <laughs> So, and then, then I was, um, I was there, I went over to see them. My brother would got married in Ireland. I am not sure why, <laughs> but he did. And I was the only family member who could go over. So I went over and made a detour to, um, Shetland, which is kind of like for Americans, it's kind of like you live in the South and you want to go to a wedding in Dallas and decide to take a detour up to Bangor, Maine. I'm trying to figure out in, uh, let's see, for Great Britain, it would be you you live in London, you have a wedding in Manchester, and you decide to take a side trip up to Shetland. It was just, well, and, and in reality, the wedding was in Dublin, and so I took a side trip up to Shetland. So um, it was a little crazy, but I met with the people at Jameson Smith, and the sales manager said, would you just do some design work for us? And I said, yes. And Anyway, that's where I started and started going, met some yarn companies and that's enough of me jabbering. So let me look at my list of what to do. Um, yeah, background. Okay. What you are looking at right now um, is the reason I haven't done this and for, I mean, it took me a while to kind of get together with this is that I wanted to, instead of just doing, I'm going to start coughing, sorry. Um, <clears throat> in, most of you, if you're used to my um, periscopes, I would sit in the living room with um, a bookcase, pretty well, bookcase or fireplace or something like that behind me. And I think with these, I kind of wanted to, to get a little more, um, uh, the, the studio is really for studio read extra bedroom. That's what it is. Um, that I could close the door if I needed to, it could be a little quieter. I could do it when I wanted to and not just when there was nobody in the house. So, um, but the studio is a wreck. I mean, it's a wreck. you can see all this stuff behind me. It's a wreck. And, and at some point um, in here, I will put in a picture of what it looks, looks like to begin with. And truth be told, I, I will probably make it look messier than it. I mean, there was a ways I could make it look a little bit better so that you actually can see the floor. But it's the room where you put everything that when somebody comes to visit that you just want to get it away. And you just dropped, I just dropped it in here because there wasn't any place else to put anything. But my sewing machine's in here. My um, office supplies. The... Um, what else is in here? All sorts of stuff. Books, um, yarn, material, thread. Over up and over here, there's thread. Uh, I've been trying to make it look better. You can see back here. Um, those are just moving boxes covered with burlap. Um, not even glued. Just sort of wickedly, randomly cut. What is that called? Um, not fussy cut for quilters. It's the just crazy, just cut them out. And then fold it all together, sort of origami style, and stick pins in them. And they, because you're sticking into cardboard, it's like this. And you get these things, and the yarn inside is in bags so that it gets, you know, the, the moths don't get to them. 
and the, and the and the boxes are like what forty cents a piece or if that much. They're just from the Home Depot or something. But it's really nice, and I want to because I've got so many. You'll see when you see the wide shot, or if you, if you haven't, if I wherever I put the wide shot, um, you'll see it's it's a, there's a lot of them, and I just couldn't afford to just buy real expensive things. So this is the outcome, and I think it looks pretty. It looks pretty good. But what I thought I would do, I was talking to some friends, and they said, I said, I, I'm not doing these videos because the studio is a wreck, and I just don't have time to clean it all up. And they said, you know, I was saying I was thinking about just having you do a, like a progress report on the video of how the cleaning up goes. And um, my dear friend, Tara Swagger said, why don't you do a time lapse of you cleaning up? So that's what you're in for, people. Is a, is a, it's a time lapse of me cleaning up the studio every, what, however many times I'm gonna do this, what, once every two weeks or three weeks or whatever it is. Um, so that's one of the things that I'm gonna do for a while until this place gets at least halfway decent. Now. Understanding, yes, I have a degree in architecture, but I don't have a degree in interior decorating. So there's a function of that. So when it, before and after is not going to be, oh my gosh, now it looks like it should be in house beautiful or southern living or something like that. Um, it, it's going to be functional. It'll be there'll be a floor. <laughs> so because right now there is no floor. I mean, <laughs> I know it's a hardwood floor, but <laughs> you can't really see it. So there's lots of pins on the floor, which is nice because something got turned over and I forgot to get it all. Oh, well, there's not, there's less of light because all this out in front of me here is light. So that's good. So anyway, that's what we're up against. Um, the other thing I thought I'd talk about is what I've been working on. I don't know whether I'm going to do the traditional, these are my, these are my, um, unfinished objects or my working on projects, works in progress. That's what it is. Works in progress. Um, and then these are my finished objects. I have no idea whether I'm going to do that or not, but I'll at least show you what I'm working on. I generally am working on my own stuff. So uh, we might talk about some design process. Um, yeah, we might talk about some design processes. We might talk about just like here, here's where I'm working on. So let's just do that now. Um, and who knows, I might get really fancy because I should tell you, as I said, I, I used to work in public television. I was a producer writer, not an editor. But I used to have to write things for people to edit, so I understand the process. And I've got a, you know, on your computers these days, you can get an editing system, whether it's iMovie or whatever. I've, I'm a PC person, so I've got something from Corel, um, which is, seems to be really good. It's what I'm used to. You can do split edits, and you can do all this kind of stuff. So, and that's what that little opening video thing you saw of the rain, because that's what it is, rain. Um, you might see, you always, you'll see some more of those because it's kind of fun to do, and it's pretty around here. So I thought you guys might like to see just kind of the pretty stuff that goes on around here. Um, even though, even the rain is nice. I like the rain. But anyway, there'll be some of those. Um, and the point to telling you that was something. I don't remember what now. Oh, um, I might get into, um, do something like, dun da da works in progress. You know, or under construction or whatever, all the other words that all the other podcasters use. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I may just put up a screen that says this is what I'm working on. So this is what I figured out, finished out yesterday. For those of you who have known me before, I haven't worked on a coat and I don't have it out right now. I will try to when I shoot the wide shot of, um, hopefully, and you've already seen it, um, you've already seen the coat because I'll try to put it on the mannequin. Um, I did a coat for... Uh, the National Needle Arts Association um, fashion show, which is a, um, it's in, in a, was in Ohio last summer. It's, uh, I, and they actually asked me the mark, the uh, yarn shop, the yarn company owner and dyer asked me if I wouldn't walk down the runway in my coat, which at the time I was flattered. And I said, sure, <laughs> I'll do that. Just peeped the mic. Sorry, um, I'll do that. Um, my, um, uh, I don't know where my brain was, but um, fortunately, by the time it came done, I did okay. I guess walk down. You know, you do your stand back, but rock back on the back foot. Show the inside of the lining. Show the inside of the work. And it turned out what I ended up making was a sort of kimono style, and hopefully you've seen it. Um, full length coat that has a border around the front of it. And uh, has splits up the sides, and it was fun to do. 
but it's a 1% of knitters or would want to work on it because it's a big project. I loved it because it's fun because I love doing projects like that. But um, that is... Um, I was just trying to remember where I put the microphone because I see it peaking every so often. But so um, what I want to do is take those same charts and do sort of smaller projects. So this is the first of those. This is a hat. Um, this right there from, you know, that border right there is what goes down the front of the coat. And if you saw the coat, which I think you will, um, it's right there. So this is the hat. This is the bottom of it like this. This will be a kit. This has not been blocked I just saw that's a shadow. That's not been blocked. It is a really, it looks like a, a bucket, doesn't it? <laughs> but it really is a, let me see if I can find the back of it now. It is a slouch reel. See, I like it like this the best. I think it's really kind of fun. But anyway, it goes back, you know, like that. So that when you turn around, let's see if I can get this. You can turn around this part there. Um, hopefully you saw that. If not, you can see it. Oops, there goes my glasses. Oh, I put those on with... <laughs> put that on with the glasses on. Sorry. This is the back of it. So at like that. So it would be around the back. So that's what I'm working on. Um, it'll be a kit from the yarn is elemental effects. It'll be a kit from that. Um, and then I just had it. The next thing I'm working on is for, um, is for TNA this year, which I seem to have yarn all in from where I trimmed the other. Oh, well, anyway, this will be a sort of a tunic kind of a cardigan -y kind of coat thing. Um, that, okay, I don't know whether you can, can you see that? Have we got enough light on? Yeah, there you go. That is the bottom of that. That's the border on the bottom. That's the majority of the, um, this will go on for, <laughs> hello, the body. Um, this will go on for another perhaps that much. And then it's going to change to where the colors are like that for a while. And then it'll go back to this dark this have set in sleeves. I'm doing waist shaping. It has some, um, see, I, this is, I love doing this kind of stuff. So this is for those who really love a challenge. Um, there's some, some three dimensional. Can you see that? Yeah. Some three dimensional kind of little pieces in it right there. Um, eventually, uh, once I get this done as a hat, oh, and there's a steak. Where is it? Oh, there. Yeah. See, there's a steak that's going to get cut open right there that you can tell the difference but that you could cut through that to open up and it'll just have a scoop neck a roundish neck and set in sleeves and and i'm doing um oh i should show you that i think i'm fun um yada 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 where's yeah here's one of my side seams and you can see there's some extra little bobbly things they're not bobbles they're not so it's pretty cool up the up the um up the side where the the decreases come in. So anyway, um, when that gets done, then there'll be a hat or mitts maybe um, as a smaller project with those same charts. So um, that's what we're working on. And they will all pretty much be kits from Elemental Effects. So that's what that's about. Um, and I think I'm about 19 minutes in or 20 minutes in here. Um, I don't have much else to talk about. I think eventually I'll take you take um, you out with the camera and do some vid the video shorts, little shorts, and they they won't be any more than a you know at the most thirty seconds, at mostly more like yeah probably twenty thirty seconds something like that. Um, there's actually a horse up the road that I thought might be kind of fun to do some little bit of video on that plus the the walk up the road um, to where the we're on I'm on a peak so. Uh, at the end of the road, they cleared everything off. It used to be an orchard, and you can kind of see almost a 360 around, so I thought I would show you that. Um, I have some other projects of mine that I'm working on. I'm teaching at the, if you, those of you in the southeast, um, I am teaching at, oh, there's a robin, out, I mean a cardinal outside. They're so pretty. Um, I'm teaching at the Unwind Retreat in Blowing Rock. Anyway, un unwind. We're, I'm teaching um, three different classes on, on uh, color work. I have put in to teach at SAF, which is the Southeastern Animal Fiber Fair, which is in October of this year. Um, the unwind is at um, in an April in the mountains. So that's kind of where that goes. But... Um, 
uh, if you're interested in color work, in um, stranded color work, if you're interested in the western mount North, North Carolina mountains and want to put up with knitting, or and vice versa, if you're interested in color work and you want to put up with jabbers about the uh, western North Carolina mountains, or at least my little pocket of it right here, then come come join me. Um, I I um, can be found. That's, that's probably I should do that. I can be found. I'm Varian Brandon on Ravelry. I am Varian Brandon on Instagram. I'm on Instagram a lot. Um, I and through Instagram, I do uh, Facebook. I have a Facebook page. Uh, my personal page, I don't do much with at all. That's my name. Um, I don't do much with it at all. But Brandon Knitting Designs, which is the business page, I, um, I'm posting to, every time I post to Instagram, it also posts over, you know how that works, posts over there. And I think that's about it. So um, if you are interested in color work, if you're interested, um, let me know. Put comments in the notes below. I should do this in the notes below because this is, <laughs> uh, put comment, put a comment in the notes below. Um, if you, whatever you would like to hear me talk about. Thank you guys for taking time. See you soon. Bye.